Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Parkitect here with Papa Bos. It's been a little while since we played, uh, as you can tell. <laughs> it's been about three months since we uploaded one. Maybe even four at this point, I'm not really sure. I think I actually uploaded in December, but I could be wrong. Um, but uh, with this one, we're, gonna, we're just going to continue from where we were last time, which is uh, go on to the next scenario. Um, with this here, I mean, it's we really haven't gone any further. I mean, I've played through quite a bit of it, and then I haven't gone to the next... I, I've even, even since purchasing the new uh, expansion, I haven't played any more <laughs> since then, because I've just been caught up in other things. Um, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to continue with uh, Shinu Airfield and try and get all of the uh, optional goals here along with this. It's You can see that, I mean, we've played it before. I want to get at least the non-optional non -optional goals by the end of June year two. So let's do that. Let's actually just go ahead and jump right in. Okay. Okay, so starting off, the first thing I wanted to do was just change the entrance. Um, I like the idea of having the path just go over the runway. Um, I think I ended up, yes, I did. I ended up changing it to be to where there's some water underneath there um, but i like the idea of it going over the runway in the initials part of it so um, with this here we're going straight towards uh the food court now i wanted the food court to be on this side i kind of initially wanted it to be that be that entire area but i got this idea about halfway placing through the food court or play halfway placing the food court that i should uh, make it an extension of the terminal uh, make it just like an, an additional terminal terminal to this airport that's already there and so I placed them there, and then I just started placing the... I just basically copy and pasted the buildings around it uh, to make it nearly identical to what we already have for the terminal there. As you can see, just placing some some borders and some cornices along this just to make it look exactly like it does on the rest of the building. Um, it's not too much to say about this here. I just uh, I had some... Um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> uh, I had some ideas on over here as well too I, I i wanted to create a couple more hangers over here um i liked the the big hanger that is already on this scenario as it is um and as you can see we're flying through this already but uh it's it's just basically for the first bu couple buildings that i created here they're just copy and pastes of the similar buildings from it just so that there's some uniformity in this scenario um, I'm just adding a couple different changes here. Right here, I'm putting the staff building uh, and covering it up with one of the hangers, uh, as well as the uh, the path, the staff only path to go underneath the walkway, so it can reach the uh, reach the the food court over there. And then I'm adding obviously the fences so that the guests don't see it. Um, with this here, there's a couple details I had forgotten. I was playing this in the sandbox earlier, and I had I liked the uh, the creativity of putting down the the crates and the cones and things along those lines. And you'll notice a couple different times I kept trying to select them when I was doing the uh, eyedropper tool, and I was getting frustrated because I, then I remembered that I wasn't playing in sandbox anymore because I don't I've already unlocked this scenario from playing it in the past. Uh, but um, I was sitting there trying to figure out why can't I pick up these <laughs> these crates and these cones to use them? They're they're really useful, uh, and that is the reason why is because when you're playing this scenario, technically those things are not unlocked yet, so we can't use them. Um, and right here, I figured the water tower, it looked, uh, I felt it went along with the theming of this park, um, of the airport, and just of like an, an old style airport anyways. Uh, back in my hometown, we have a, a pretty similar airport to this, um, where it's just, it's just old. Uh, there's only like a hangar. It used to be part of this old resort. Um, and it's in the middle of the no it's in the middle of nowhere so that's the the, the hangar is just kind of uh kind of rusted over there's a big water tower next to it that's that's for the resort that's next to it that is that is kind of uh, decrepit and and underrun um, I actually don't even think it's open anymore um, I could be mistaken it's been a while since I've been there so uh, but with that we're, we're gonna continue on I wanted to get a ride down so that way when I when I open the park or when I hit unpause uh, while I'm building there is at least a ride to go along with this. Uh, as you can see, we continued the path across the, the little bridge that I made there. And right here is where I discover that um, I forgot that I had installed the new expansion, which allows the tunnels on the pathways. And I'd completely forgotten about that. And I saw that little button. And I'm like, what is this button right here? Because <laughs> it's been a, it's honestly been a little while since I played Parkitect. And uh, I noticed that those it creates these perfect little tunnels that look like they would be part of a part of an airport terminal terminal, at least like a modern one. Um, and so I figured those looked 
just perfect uh, to go along with the rest of this building. There is some things I probably could have changed uh, to make it, it look theme a little bit better here. Um, and then this part right here, you're noticing that I'm using the crates that come along with the uh, the space scenario, um, which I had unlocked earlier. Uh, and I felt like the crates just worked perfectly as suitcases. Um, I had seen it previously on, I, I don't know if it was a Let's, uh, some other Let's Players channel or if it was on a picture, uh, but I thought it was genius. And so I'd kind of just recreated that here and there, just adding like it was a, a couple little little crates on the side there. So uh, we added that there. We're adding just a few more theming lights. I struggled to, to figure out what kind of lights I wanted to put in that area. And I just went along with the string lights that went along the sides. Um, I felt that those party lights looked a little out of place. Uh, so, so that's what we did there. Um, adding a few more decorations here along the bridge. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that, the way that I did there is adding those lights. Normally you wouldn't be able to put the lights on the, on the inside of the bridge like that. But if you add a, a fence piece along the, uh, along the pathway there, then you can add the, the lights that go along the center of the bridge. And I felt that as a neat little trick there, it's kind of hidden by the, uh, the planters. And I just think it looks pretty good there. Uh, going along here, I was trying to figure out a border for this this airplane ride. I, I wasn't sure what to do with it, and then I kind of just went, well, what would be in a, a fairground-type ride that's kind of out in the open? And I guess a chain-link fence would, and so that's what I went with here. Chain-link fences usually aren't the prettiest in this game, but I felt like it matched the theming pretty well uh, of this park. I mean, there's a chain-link fence going around the entire park here, and if you think of a an airport or like a derelict airport or, you know, a big... Um, abandoned building or just like even like a big government like facility what would be along the, the outside of it would be would be fences so I felt that 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 helped out a little bit there and, and made it, it it goes along with the theming of it as well um, adding a few more paths here the uh, the covered paths just to uh, be concise with the theming as well and then I added a few more uh, supports here just along this walkway to, to maybe just add a few more decorations to the to the hangers, but um, we're getting ready to end of this part of the recording, so let's go ahead and jump back into the live part. Okay, so I haven't opened the park yet, um, but this is kind of where, I don't know, I liked the way that I added the extension of the buildings here for all of the food court items. Um, I wanted to put the food court over here. That was the plan all along. Uh, and then the staff buildings over here. I kind of did this in a, in a playthrough before this to see what it would look like. And I like the idea of having just like another small little hanger over here hiding the, the staff building, uh, which is which is what's going on over here. Uh, and then just having this going all the way back with, with just some like trussing going on over here, some supports kind of just adding the way of the path. Um, but I, I also liked I was pretty proud of myself in regards to the scenery here. Just It's just like another wing of the terminal, I guess that's what this is. Uh, would be the terminal of the airport. And with just some of the, a couple few items, or sorry, a couple few uh, of the uh, shops inside of here. Uh, I put a, a burger shop, a hot dog shop, and a drink shop. And then I just put the, the bathroom over here. I, I thought about theming it, but I'm just kind of leaving it how it is. I think it adds to the feel of, the, of this whole area of being the airport. Um, and I added a couple other things here too, uh, just like this little uh, scaffolding here, uh, a water tower. I felt that fit pretty well here. And then we just added a quick little ride over here just to have over here, because I know I'm going to want to expand this way. Um, I do plan on putting a roller coaster over here. I'm probably just going to put the, where is it? The junior coaster right here. And yeah, we'll go from there. Let's go ahead and just start building the junior coaster now. All right, so uh, as I had mentioned um, in the previous part, we are going to be putting the roller first roller coaster of the park here. Uh, it's a junior coaster, and um, I think it just works well with the theming of this park. It's obviously in a small park like this that in a realistic setting, you're not going to have any insane, like, I don't know, like steel, uh, massive steel coasters here, although that may change <laughs> depending on what we get in our research, but... Um, I felt just like a, a small little kiddie coaster or junior coaster works really well in this park. And as you can see here, I really wasn't happy with just having the path being uh, going over the runway. So I added a little pond here. Um, I do believe I get, I change it later because it just looks out of place and uneven with the path. So um, 
But with this here, I did struggle a little bit here trying to figure out what types of curves I wanted to do. I really wanted this to go uh, a pretty simple coaster, just a lot of um, up and down banking curves, a couple of small helixes. Uh, and I, cause I wasn't, I had no idea what I really wanted to do in regards to the design. I knew about halfway through, I had remembered and recalled, uh, seeing a, uh, a coaster. I think it was actually was on this scenario, um, where there was a, uh, a junior coaster and it had a section where it was flying around like it was through the air. Um, I knew I wanted it that about halfway through making this coaster, I wanted it in the, uh, in the beginning section of this coaster kind of just i don't know it just felt like it's a, a flight simulator where you're flying through the air and then you go to a section where it's all blue and there's clouds flying around you and albeit you are in a roller coaster it just it's kind of a dark ride but on the outside if that makes sense uh i, I don't even know i guess he would just call that a theme ride at that point i don't know what the actual term for that is i'm uh, unfortunately not as versed in regards to the terms of the types of coasters uh along the lines of someone like silver red is um, but here you can see we're adding just a few, uh, a few small curves around here that are that are banking, um, and and changing elevation every every few turns or so, just to add at least a little bit of excitement too, because the junior coasters aren't very exciting when it comes down to it, and I feel like just adding small small little details into the into the coaster, uh, like like changing the banking of it while you're while you're elevating in a curve, uh, kind of creating like a helix effect. Will, uh, will drastically change the the excitement rating of the coaster and it helps out a lot. Now here, uh, since we didn't build the food court all the way around the entire terminal and just in that little section, I decided that I, I wanted to utilize the terminal as part of the roller coaster. And as you can see here, we're, we're just ending the roller coaster by going straight through the terminal. <laughs> uh, obviously we're gonna have to change it and add some decoration to it, but I was pretty pleased with how the, the roller coaster turned out. Um, we'll get to decorating it here in a bit, but I, this is a problem that I, I do struggle with in Parkitect is that I'll be working on something and then about halfway through or three quarters of the way through before finishing it, I go and I notice something like right there. I was like, oh, the paths just look really ugly here. I need to, to work on that. And so I go and start working on the path and then I get back, start working on the detail again. And then I'm like, oh wait, no, if we're going to open the park, we need to put in another ride. <laughs> so I, I do that again. I put in another ride. And then before I even start detailing the ride, I, I noticed what I had mentioned earlier with the uh, the pathway and the, the the small little pond there did not align correctly. And so I was like, oh, now I got to fix this now. <laughs> so before I even finish the theming of the roller coaster, or even finish putting the the, the pads down for the road coaster or anything along those lines. I just got distracted by four different things. Um, luckily, I come back to it. I start testing the coaster, see what the excitement rating is, and see how many cars we can get away with uh, having two trains. And so we do that because I prefer to have at least two trains on a roller coaster. I know some of them it's only viable to have one, especially when there's like block break sections. But I feel like the uh, when it comes to the sustainability of the coaster uh, in the long term of the the profit of it, um, having more than one coaster works out pretty well. Uh, as you can see here, I'm finding a little bit more detailing to do. Um, I made it go through the part of the terminal. I felt like that was pretty neat. It just seems like the, you know, those sections when you're in an airport that's in the terminal that's getting close to where you exit and load the, the gate to the gates. That's what I'm trying to think of the, the gate area in the terminal. It's just all big glass windows up inside, up and down the sides. And you can see all the airplanes landing and taking off. And so I thought that was a pretty, uh, neat detail that I was that's exactly what I was thinking of when I was creating that little tower part of the I guess you would call it of the of the terminal there where the that the the ride goes through um and then I kept thinking well those are usually pretty long so let's go ahead and add to that and so we started adding it to it here I initially wanted to and I think I mentioned this later in one of my the live parts of this I initially wanted this area to be like a baggage claim um there was a Reddit post that I saw of this scenario that someone had did that. It was an insane, if I can find it, I'll link it below um, in my, in the description, but there was this insane Chinoo airfield uh, playthrough that had a really insane coaster that had, I think it was a wild mouse coaster that had a baggage claim using the tracks of the ride as part of like the, the baggage claim going around and it was really well detailed. So that's where some of the inspiration comes from, from this part of the terminal here. Um, once again, I, I noticed I was like, okay, if we're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead and extend this part of the terminal, and we'll create this area. It'll, it'll kind of be like 
initially, like I said, I wanted it to be a baggage claim, but this is just going to be the, the gate area. There's, there's some bags laying around. Um, you can see the big windows here that the tracks go through. Normally that, you know, if you're in the terminal, there's maybe like people movers or uh, you're just walking to the, to the gates where, um, where you'd be sitting down and there's a couple stores in there. Uh, I probably could have done a little bit more detailing on the inside, but it, it does take a lot of time to do that. And I was starting to get a little, a little annoyed with this building uh, just because it just took so much time to, to figure out the detailing with. Um, let's see. I, I, I am really happy with the way that this uh, this roller coaster turned out. There's still a lot more detailing. I think we spend most of this episode actually detailing this <laughs> this coaster, but I, I am very happy with the way that it turned out. Um, there's still a few more areas on this here. I did struggle with placing where I should place windows and some of the floors here, um, as well as how it's going to coincide with the paths going all across the across the water there, because that's something you that does kind of break the immersion a little bit, but I feel like I, I did pretty well in blending that in there and, and trying to figure out how it, how it coincides with the actual terminal, like, like the leaving in the entrance, entrance and uh, exit of the, of the terminal, uh, for this, for this part of the roller coaster. Um, I'm trying to think there, we're getting near the, the end of this section of recording. So I'm trying to think if there's anything that's, that's pertinent, uh, to talk about here. Um, I guess I guess we can just go ahead and just wait until we get to the the recording section spot. Okay, well that was a lie because um, I had forgotten that <laughs> the live part wasn't actually uh, right now. It was uh, after this next section here. Um, so the the coaster is actually finished. I mean, obviously not the detailing, but I did remember that I wanted to to finish this little garden section here at the end uh, of the the main plaza. Uh, entrance. Um, I just wanted to add a little garden with some shrubbery and a couple trees here to just kind of show that there is a little bit of um, care that went into the park. You know, it's they they didn't just open up the park and make it into like this all these all these trees around it and then kind of just added that and that's really about it. Um, I wanted there to be a at least a little bit of some gardening. Some I don't really know how you would call it. Just not rough <laughs> plant not rough foliage around the park i guess um this garden over here it, it's really quick just threw down a couple shrubs some trees and that's really about it um but with this back to here i was i did get a little annoyed because i forgot i had opened up my park and people were complaining or i noticed that uh the the game was complaining that no one had gotten any of the food um and that's because i'd forgotten to link my uh all of my shops to have the haulers bring them food. So I had to, to do that really quickly. And this is what I had mentioned earlier in regards to the suitcases um, inside this area being kind of just like the waiting area and the gates inside of the terminal. Uh, and now we're just finishing the detailing to the actual part of uh, the terminal, just copying and pasting some some little pieces from the nearby section of the terminal that was pre-built into this game in the scenario and adding it to here. And then I had uh, some ideas in regards to I don't, did I actually keep those? I did. I guess I did. Uh, the awnings, but I meant to the to the top side of the uh, of this area. I kind of wanted it to be like it's maybe a little under construction still. Um, I think I did actually skip some of the the detailing that I wanted to do and just kept the first part of it here. But um, adding two little tanks up there, maybe they're I don't know propane tanks or some type of uh, gas or liquid holding tanks at the top of this terminal um and then adding some i I, really, I guess they would just be like ac units uh things along those lines just little details up here and then adding some scaffolding i think is what i do uh, if i remember correctly i did record this about a week ago so i don't remember ex i guess i could have re reviewed it but uh here we're adding just some more details yeah some more scaffolding around this area just to show that maybe there's a little things under construction uh around this area um maybe they are maybe this terminal or sorry maybe this airport that uh you know, I was saying is run or what is a little run down is is being uh, brought back to life a little bit here with the construction of this park. So uh, with that, we we do move on over here. I add a couple more details over here. Um, there are a few more things that I wanted to add uh, on top of the terminal or on top of this here. And that is the little AC units, I guess you would call them. That is, I guess, what's on top of the, the buildings usually. And then I want to add, add this little scaffolding here to kind of be the... I guess a little lookout tower. I'm not. I'm not really sure. I just like the way that it looked with the the fire engine escape or the fire engine escape, the fire ladder escape there, 
and then we can add just like a roof and uh, a few other things to kind of make it look like a, a watch out tower not really sure why you need a watch out tower <laughs> because we already have the um, observation deck in here but uh, i felt like it just added a little bit more to the theming made it look a little bit cooler with just a little little radio antennas on top um with uh with this little section here and now we're getting into the the i guess refrigeration units adding some uh piping around here i think this is from the uh the rocket rocketry theme or would it be the outer space theme where it is you can you can add some pipes to this and some little bendy curves to look like it's just piping on top of the on top of the the uh the roof there um it does it, with the way that it is here um I, I did like the way it looks it looks like it's a little under construction uh with some permanent pieces on top of the on top of the building um but this is what i mentioned that i thought i had done it i know with that i was going to come back to it but i didn't i think that's literally all i did to the top of the building it's a little unfortunate but it's fine um, and then here is where I'm deciding what I'm going to be putting in here. I think this is around the time where I had the remembrance. Yeah, you can see here, I had the remembrance of like, oh yeah, there was that one, uh, one screenshot or video that I saw the person was doing the, uh, the flyovers of, of act as if they were flying through the air. And so I started building walls here instead of fences. Um, and I, and then I start changing what I do is I change it to, and you can see with the, the flooring there as well. I change it to the color blue uh, to kind of just make it feel like you're you're flying through the sky, even though you know you're obviously in a roller coaster and you can see everything around you. Um, and you can see that we're doing it here. Uh, I probably could have placed the floors honestly, a um, maybe sunk the the floor in or the uh, sunk the the land in a little bit and added the floors like two uh, two steps higher above the land. To show that there is because a lot of the times the, the grass starts to grow on the land and it peeks through the floors so uh, that is something i could have done in the future if anyone else is, has that idea as well and then behind it i added a bunch of grass and a bunch of trees because the the idea for this is that you're going to be i don't know if it's a like a crash landing idea um or if it's something else entirely but uh the you're flying through the air and then you're going to see some uh overgrowth areas behind at the end of the coaster um, and here, uh, I think I mentioned this during the live section of the recording, but I had the idea, and I also saw it with the other playthrough or the other um, picture of this type of coaster with this section, where there were clouds flying around, um, but the clouds were underneath all of the tracks. And I had the idea, and I liked it, of it being where you actually go through the tracks because, you know, airplanes go through clouds. And with this here, although these are supposed to be solid objects, you can't really tell, like, it's... They still go through them as if they're not solid objects so i thought it would work pretty well with the idea of them just passing through them as if they were clouds um and then also i had uh i was like oh i can actually add mountains too so maybe this is just like them flying above the mountains through the clouds and so that's what we have here uh is going on trying to figure out the best way to create uh snow snow peaked mountains without making it look too uh, geometrical and <laughs> looking a little bit more natural um so with that, we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and jump right back into the live section here. Okay, so we've completed the coaster, I think. I mean, there's still a couple more things that I would like to add, but for the most part, it's done. Uh, I'm really very happy with the way this turned out. I like the... I mean, this just seems like another... Maybe just another addition to the wing of the, the airport that's obviously been filled it around with a little bit since then uh like maybe just upgraded or it's uh, maybe we'll just say that's kind of under construction a little bit up here um which is what all these uh little details are doing around here but i like the way that this turned out um this was the with this here i like the way i kept it to where they're going through it initially i didn't want the the way i wanted it to go is that even though it's technically going through like props right um you're going through clouds and when you're flying in an airplane you're flying through the, the clouds here so i kind of like the way that it, it turned out here with it going through the cloud going through the clouds um just cads adds to the experience a little bit let's watch it while we're here so you go here you go through the clouds right there and then you kind of go around this little snow peaked mountain you fly through the clouds again before going back around and leaving this little little area it's, it's kind of like a dark ride but not really it's kind of around the outside right uh yeah, the plan is, um, I think I'm going to put another coaster around here. Right now, we, uh, oops, sorry. 
Um, we only have the mini coaster and the wild mouse, and I don't really like the mini coaster that much. I don't think it does very well. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna put a wild mouse here. Uh, I have some plants, um, but yeah, wild mouse right here. We'll, we may add another ride or two here. It depends. We're already at 116 guests in the park. Uh, it's not even. I mean, we we did didn't let this run for very long, but uh, year two isn't even over yet, and I have a feeling we're gonna win before we can even get the second part of the optional goal done. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just jump right back into it. All right, so in the rest of this section here, um, I wanted to figure out how to hide this little tunnel. I couldn't figure it out, so I was just literally just sitting there for about a minute trying to figure it out before I got distracted and moved on to another section of the park. Um, I realized that I, I that little garden section that I made there was a little barren. It just kind of felt out of place, so I wanted to add a couple more things there. So just plop down a few more fountains, um, and then once again getting distracted. I realized that my staff were walking around really tired and uh, they probably also needed some training. So I added a staff training room over here and another hangar area. Um, I had an idea of, since this was by a bunch of planes over here, to make this kind of look like a uh, military like hangar, um, like a military, uh, yeah, just a military base hangar. Um, adding a little, looks like a toll station, but it, or like I guess it'd be a lot more like a security station. Um, and then adding some flags over here and then I was trying to figure out I was thinking about a way to make it look like a, a little gate that goes up and down um, and we do figure that out by adding a one of those um, I don't remember exactly what they're called in the game uh, but it's just one of those piping pieces uh, that is angled um, and it makes it look like an actual like a fence moving up here um, but with that that's just where the staff training room is and I was trying to figure out uh, in this area, just what what else I should do in regards to theming. Uh, I got I saw the plane over there, and I had the uh, this is the idea that I was talking about earlier in regards to whether or not this plane or this area is maybe like a crash landing area. Um, I, I guess you just leave it up to imagination, huh? Because there's a a decrepit old plane there in the in the area where there's a bunch of just uh, just tall grass and and uh, foliage growing over. Um, working on a few more details around this area, making the the swinging or the the circular plane ride look a little bit prettier um, adding a few more things around this area to make the the paths a little bit prettier adding just some foliage some flowers things along those lines um, trying to figure out what color <laughs> scheme worked best um, and then I'm still trying to figure out how to hide that here and I think I just sit here for a little while trying to figure it out and then I was like oh yeah we have a new ride we should make a new ride um, there I was going to put a ferris wheel and then uh, this is when I was thinking, oh, we should add another roller coaster. Um, I wasn't sure where to make it. And I think it's about right about here. This is where I was having the idea. I was like, well, I, I wanted that area that looked like baggage claim. Uh, I kind of wanted it on this roller coaster, but I, that's why I got into the theme or the scenery theming again section there for a second. Uh, but I realized that it would just look really off with the path already going underneath it. Um, and I wanted another roller coaster, but I wasn't sure where I was going to put it. So I just dis just scrapped that whole idea right there and just worked on a little bit more decorations and theming in the park, which you can see here, just adding some foliage, adding some brush, uh, brushes, adding those vines over there, just to make it a little bit more like this park was a little more planned than just plopped down. And this area is a little bit more up, uh, kept tidy. Um, around this time, I do get the idea of adding that second coaster though. Uh, in that second coaster, I wanted it to be, I had the idea, I was like, oh, let's make it, um, let's have a wild mouse coaster. And I wanted to make it into Goofy Sky School from Disney's California Adventure. Um, and obviously California, <laughs> Disneyland's California Adventure. Uh, but first, before we do that, I, I had a little, just another uh, ride over here. So that way this area isn't so empty and it gives the, oh no, I just moved that ride. That's right. Because I had the idea, I was like, I want to put that over here. Um, so you can see here, I'm struggling a little bit on how to make the ride. Uh, I had to think about how I couldn't remember exactly what it looked like. I knew it was a, a rectangular shape in regards to a wild mouse coaster, but I'm sitting here starting to work on it. I don't think I actually no. at this point. I haven't gotten the idea yet of doing um, dis, of doing Goofy Sky School for California Adventure. This is where I am trying to realize or trying to figure out if I can make the baggage claim uh, section of the wild mouse coaster because after scrapping the whole idea on the junior coaster I was like oh it's actually maybe we can just move it over here and do it with the the wild mouse but as you can see I stopped doing that as well because it just wouldn't make sense to have it way over there 
on the corner um uh after the 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 sky section of that coaster so now as you can see if you're not familiar with the ride that is the uh the first drop before it starts doing into the the very sharp corners um it just goes up and it's a tiny little drop into the corners and you can see i'm using some reference photos there is someone that has already created this ride i think i mentioned that in the live section of the build there is someone that's already created this ride in uh on parkitect and i believe it's in the steam workshop um but i am going off of their reference photo and then just i had a couple reference photos of the actual goofy sky school uh open on a on a browser on another monitor here um and it's not it's not like a difficult ride to recreate it's just a it's a typical wild mouse ride uh it goes really high up and then it has some switchbacks that are uh some switchbacks that are leading downhill into a small drop and then into a larger drop uh before it loops all the way back around to the beginning of the entrance just like is it a typical typical wild mouse coaster um we're working through it here does it's not too difficult to figure out the only thing that is difficult is uh i think you'll notice that i work on it for a little bit is getting the brake sections correct on the speed of it um, because I noticed on the first run through of it, the brake sections were breaking it too, a little too hard. I think it was bringing it down to, I think the default is 15 miles per hour in the game, which was causing the, the excitement rating to not be very high. Um, and you'll see me work on it a little bit here. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm just trying to figure out how the pathing. Now, the way that I set up the ride in the entrance is not exact as what uh, Goofy Sky School looks like. Goofy Sky School, if you are familiar with the ride... Um, the entrance zigzags in front of it, and then the ent and then the exit is just immediate exit right out into the pathway uh, on its left. Um, but the uh, the you would be entering it from the left. So if this was actually correct, the the runway paths that we have in the middle of the park would be on the left hand side of where the exit is, not where it's at right now. And this zigzag entrance would uh, continue all the way to near where the exit is right now. So um it's okay it's it's what we're doing it's how the park is laid out and how i just adapted it, it like i said it's not a one-to-one -one recreation of it um it's pretty similar uh but with that we're we are now starting to work on the um the design and um decorations of the coaster with this i just relied really heavily on the reference photo from the person who had already built this in the steam workshop um in the uh, in the actual roller coaster, there are some sections that are just uh, cutaways of Goofy flying a plane, Goofy slapped into the uh, like he's going through a billboard um, that are hard to recreate in t in a uh, in Parkitect. Uh, we do do that on a couple of things though the the flying through the billboard and things along those lines. Um, but uh, with that here, uh, with that being said, I am working on the entrance now. Um, I wasn't really sure what it should look like, so I just kept it with the same hangar theme as the rest of the park. Um, just the metallic, I guess that would be technically aluminum siding is probably what is in hangars. Uh, aluminum siding on the entrance way. Uh, that with some, uh, I wanted to use the pavilions that are tents, but we don't, I don't believe I have those unlocked yet in this scenario when I'm, when I'm working on it right now. So we just went with the umbrellas. Uh, they look fine. There's no... I, I'm happy with it. It doesn't look terrible. Um, and with this here, we're just building up the walls. In that person that created this in the Steam Workshop, I like the way that they did it. They have these uh, these sloping pieces that kind of make it look like uh, the sky that's going alongside with the track itself, um, just to give it more of that illusion, a little bit more immersion into the ride itself, as if you're actually going through, you know, Goofy Sky School here. Um, I work on this a little bit here. There's, I mean, there's a lot of pieces. It's just a lot of moving pieces, recoloring them. It's nothing too difficult. It just takes a lot of time. Uh, this is this is a great ride. If if no one's been to, or if you have not been to to California Adventure, um, this is a, it's a great ride. It's just, like I said, it's just a typical uh, wild mouse coaster, but it's good because you get a good view of the majority of the park. Um, but, uh, with that, we're, we're going to go ahead and, uh, end this part here and just jump right back into the live section of it. Okay. And with this here, if you aren't familiar with it, and if you're unaware, this is, it's not exact, but it's nearly a one-to-one -one replication of Goofy Sky School in a uh, Disneyland's California Adventure in California. Um, I... This has already been done before by someone in Parkitect, and I think it's on the Steam Workshop, so you should go and look them up. I'll link it, or I'll put it in the video so you can get the actual Steam Workshop 
of it. I built it though pretty close to what I think they did as well as just looking at reference pictures of um, of Goofy Sky School and California Adventure. And I even added this little a plane here as well. Uh, I believe they did that as well. And then I kind of, well, it's not exact, but I, I like the way that they did it in their Steam Workshop of them um, doing the little like sky going along the side of everything and using the plane there as well. Um, I still have a little bit more theming to do here, but uh, we'll continue on that. Um, and then here with this, I, I mean, I might, I might add some more things to it. Um, I'm not really happy with the way that this looks over here. Maybe I'll change a little bit of this hanger. Um, I still have to fix up a little bit over here. Uh, I'm still very happy. I'm very pleased with this. This turned out so much better than I expected. Uh, I'm very pleased with this building. I have to hide these, but this coaster is probably one of my favorite things that I've done so far in this game. It's not even in a super exciting coaster, right? It's a 59.6 excitement rating, so it's not insanely crazy, not very intense, but I just really like the theming. I think I did very well with the theming of it being this flying through the air area. Oh, that's kind of annoying with the little grass pieces, whatever. Flying through the air, like maybe I should have put the floor like one up. And then um, this abandoned like airplane, like I don't know if the, I don't know if it, the uh, the theme of this is that you're flying through the air and then you crash, <laughs> is that what that is here? But maybe I could have changed it to that. That's what it is, is that you crash in this airplane here and that's why this airport is abandoned. But just like an abandoned airplane in, a, in the forest is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, we still have a few more things to work on with here, um, and let's just hop right back into it. All right, and so with this section here, um, I believe, yeah, so I, w I wanted to create a uh, similar hangar entrance to this area over here. I know that, and what I, you can tell what I'm trying to do is um, in the actual Goofy Sky School, there's a little wooden water tower, and I know that there's a wooden water tower in this game, but it is not unlocked with the scenario. Uh, so I attempted to just create a normal hanger and that just looked ugly. <laughs> so um, I believe that with this here, I just ended up going with a uh, natural uh, little themescape around there. And then with this here, we are replacing those umbrellas with just some pillars and some glass overhead. Um, we're just going with the same color scheme as the aluminum siding. But uh, I wanted to, or if I remember correctly, the an actual, uh, actually at the actual ride of Goofy Sky School and California Adventure. It is the same type of idea there. I believe it is like red pillars and glass overhead. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% positive. Uh, it has been a little bit since I've been there. Um, but if I recall, that is how the uh, the entrance is themed as well. Um, and I know that there are some, it's like right around the, there's buildings around it as well. Well, I guess it's the Grand Californian that's right around it that it just kind of squeezes into. So, um, but with that, uh, we're, nearly finished with this ride actually um there's a few more things that i wanted to add here i initially as you can tell i'm adding just a little bit more borders finishing up the wall detailing a little bit here uh and then with i was going to keep the runway section here what i wanted to do is have it like where the right where you're going up the incline is the runway like you're getting ready to take off and then the rest of it is you're flying around through the air um and i probably could have done that uh okay if i if i didn't put part of the ride or if the part of the ride wasn't going directly underneath or nearly directly underneath the the incline itself um so you'll see me remove that in the future and just make it all blue uh, i believe actually i don't remember <laughs> um and then some of these other details that i'm adding here are just uh, a few more wall pieces that i was referencing that steam uh workshop picture of the other uh, goofy sky school and steam workshop but then i ended just ended up adding my own walls because I think they looked a little bit better in this, this scenario here precisely. Um, we're adding a few head choppers here. I believe that's what they're called. They're just uh, the adding the illusion that you're going to hit your head uh, before ducking underneath them. So I do believe those actually are in the ride if I remember correctly, but I believe that there are some more decorations that you can't add in here. Like I think there's a like a duck or a goose going through one of them. Um, I don't remember 100% off of the top of my head, but I believe it's something along those lines. Uh, and then here I'm remembering because I was placing some signs and as you can see, I pause right here and I'm like, I pause and I remember, oh my gosh, with the new expansion uh, and a uh, new part of the, the game, you can add custom signs. And so <laughs> with that, I immediately pause, save the game and go find the Goofy Sky School signs uh, and replace part of this sign here and add the actual learn to fly uh, section that the plane um, flies into uh, as well as the Goofy Sky School logo. And I felt that was pretty 
uh, pretty, I was pretty proud of myself for doing that here. Um, you can see I had to pause again and go Photoshop that really quickly and then add it in. And I just, I was really proud of this. It, it really helps with the immersion of the ride, recreating the actual feel of Goofy Sky School, at least in my mind. <laughs> um, but that's where we're going that with there. Uh, a few more, a few more details. Another, another head chopper here. Uh, don't know if that part actually exists in the ride or not, but thought it looked cool. Thought I added it to the ride, so we're we're keeping it in. Um, it really isn't that much more to talk about this ride here. Uh, we're pretty much close to the end of it. Um, I really enjoyed creating this ride. Uh, Disneyland is California Adventure specifically, but Disneyland in, in itself has just a holds a really special place in my heart it is the first theme park i ever visited um i live in california so i guess i have that like hometown pride i guess uh and i've been to, i've been to it so many times that i can't count and at this point um it just becomes of i i made it a yearly trip if i can if i can afford it uh but ever since moving to socal albeit we can't because of quarantine but uh once it happens uh we are able to go to parks again uh that is going to be a frequent trip for me because it is my favorite park of all time and honestly, it's one of my favorite places of all time. Uh, but I digress. We are getting back to the game. <laughs> and with that, uh, the entrance of this ride, or of Goofy Sky School, like I said, it's not the same to the ride at all just because of the location. So I wanted to create a little natural scape here. A little nature scape, I believe that's what they're called. And with that, I'm realizing, oh, I should probably actually add more detail to the rest of the park if I'm just going to do that here. So I'm adding some trees, adding some more foliage. And then at this point, I realize, oh, I can actually cover up this section here with bushes and then I stopped and I'm like wait why don't I just add another wall around it <laughs> and just make it part of the wall and so that's what I do I could have done that so many so much longer so much longer ago but it, it is what it is right um for the rest of this park here uh I am just making more part of the hang uh another part of the hangar here. I realized that maybe I should have an entrance and an exit of this little hangar area over here next to uh, the thrill rides and the, the soft rides. And so in code all post fashion, I get distracted and realize, hey, maybe we'll add a, a path behind here so that people don't have to walk all the way down the plaza and all the way down the strip just to get to this section here. So uh, we start working on that. And with that here, because of the way I wanted it to look, we start removing the actual airstrip um, siding or the actual airstrip from the ground. Uh, so that way it looks a little bit neater. And so that way it just, it looks a little bit better with the theming that we've created here. Uh, and then as you can see, I'm creating a little section here that looks like, um, looks like an area where, where cars come in and, and go through like a garage. Uh, I didn't want to make it see-through because then people would be able to see the staff building behind that. And if there's one thing about Parkitech is that the guests do not like it when they can see staff buildings. So uh, for that, I'm just adding some more scaffolding, some more detailing, just to make it look like a hangar garage, cars going in and out. Uh, the car just being going through the wall there kind of breaks the immersion a little bit, but from a distance, I guess it doesn't really necessarily matter. It, it's just a small detail at the end. Um, with that, um, I'm realizing that I wanted to put another food court in this section. Uh, as you can see, I'm like, oh, if I'm going to have to put a food court here, I'm going to have to add another employee path under here. So that's what we do. We we delete some of the section here, add in a, a steep incline for the employee path, uh, and just to add it underneath this path and bring it out into the food court itself. Um, but with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right back into the live version of this, uh, where we start building the food court. Okay, so the plan right now is... I think I'm going to build another food court over here. I mean, that was the plan. I was going to initially connect this, right? Just to come over here. Um, and that's why we hid the pathways. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a food court over here. I mean, we don't have a lot of money left, but we'll build a food court over here. Uh, we're getting pretty close to finishing the uh, finishing this scenario. We're at 217 already before year one. Um, I'm very, very happy with the way this turned out here. It's, I mean... It's pretty identical to, to Goofy Sky School. It's a, I mean, a couple of different things here, but I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Um, yeah, it's I like the theming that I did. I feel like it's just it looked really cool. Very proud of this, obviously. And this, I was like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add the signs from the, <laughs> from the actual coaster, but 
Uh, we still have a little bit more theming to do. Maybe add a little bit more to this. It's kind of weird that it's just hanging out right here, but uh, we'll see. And then um, definitely add to this area here. I, I like just leaving these open like it is. I thought about making big old coverings for them, but I mean, I, I think it's fine like it is just adding the opening. The big old open like planes, I think it just adds to the theme of the airport. Uh, but yeah, let's, I think we just have to finish out a food court here and yeah, I think that's the plan. We'll just jump right back, back into it from there. Okay, so as I had mentioned, uh, we're gonna recreate this food court over here. I'm working on this, uh, I guess it would be a catwalk area of the path. And then, oh, as you'll notice here, I reloaded my park because if you notice, there is a, I don't know if it's a bug uh, for Park Architect or not. Um, I ended up just leaving it as is where you place a fence on the border and it changes part of the border, but then you can't delete it. So if anyone knows if that's a bug or if that's intended and there's just something that I'm missing, um, but there's a couple sections here where I was adding the fence along the border of the park where that where that uh, that chain link fence is and it wouldn't let me delete the fence that I had placed. Um, and then what was happening was, and I think you'll, you noticed it, I may, it may have gone a little too fast, but there are sections where I was, I would place the fence and it wouldn't actually show, but it would take away $5 on, you know, where the, the red um, plus $5, minus $5 for placing a fence shows up next to your mouse cursor, but it wouldn't reflect to the actual, to my actual balance in, uh, in game. So I don't know if that's a bug uh, in the game or if that's just something, I don't know if, if someone can, uh, can let me know, that would be great. Or maybe I, maybe I should just reach out to the devs. They are pretty accessible in regards to that. But I was getting a little annoyed by it because I was trying to place fences along this entire border. And you can see the most of it, I haven't got, I, I covered it all the way through. But there is just one little section that is not covered by the fence. And I just ended up leaving it because I couldn't figure it out. It just kept, it kept bugging me. So I was like, whatever, I'm just, I'm just going to leave it. I can't do anything about it. It doesn't necessarily affect the theming at all. So whatever, it's fine. Uh, with that, um, we're moving over here. And if you'll notice... Over on the left-hand side, we uh, we have about negative monies right now. <laughs> I realized that I'd used all my monies and I didn't take any big loans earlier. I only took the $5,000 loans, which is a mistake. I should have just take, took the big loans. I usually pride myself in not taking any loans in this game, but uh, we did that. So we're kind of just waiting for money um, so we can finish this food court area because uh, it, it is a problem. But with that, we're actually ending this section of the playthrough. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right back into the live section. Okay, well, I am uh, I'm stopping. <laughs> I mean, we're cutting in right here because if you notice, we're at 244 guests right now. It's before year one. We're, I mean, we're about to win. We had 250 guests in your park. We're about to win. I want to continue and finish until we get the the fourth the optional goal before year two. But I mean, there's no way we don't we don't win. We're about to win. Here. Let's go ahead and speed it up while we finish working on the or so we can get that on the uh, get it on on recording. For that oh of course it starts raining <laughs> uh let's go ahead and come on you know you want to do it 300 you're very close huzzah there you do so i mean that wasn't too difficult this game we completed all non-optional goals by the end of june to year two i mean we still have to get the challenge goals to get that second gold star but would you look at that that's shinu shinu airfield done I was not expecting it to be as easy as that, <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty fun. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish up this food court here and then we're going to try and get the uh, the optional sell at least 400 park tickets. So we'll keep that going. Maybe I'll just actually just, what I'll do, I'll just finish up this park here or this part of it here and uh, we'll call it a day. But um, with that, I'll just leave it uh, muted until now. Um, we'll work on it a little bit more. Um, and hopefully you enjoy the final park and the final, uh, or enjoy the park and the final last bits of it. But, uh, thanks so much for watching everybody. Um, I'll be trying to be a little bit faster in <laughs> uploading the next part. Uh, but we'll see. Civ has kind of consumed my life again. Um, and at the end of the video, we'll go ahead and just do, uh, some ride throughs or some more just in-depth looks of each of the, the coasters here for that. But... Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. So, uh, as you can tell, we didn't 
end of the scenario here. Uh, I was right in saying that I wanted to go ahead and theme it out a little bit longer. Um, we we win right here uh, again. Um, and I think I just ended up uh, pausing it and reloading it because I wanted to to start working on it again. Um, and as you can see here, we wanted to actually finish the theming of this park. Uh, and I started to get a little bit... Well, this usually happens when I play these types of games is that I think about it and I'm like, oh, I want to um, actually create and make the, the park even better than it already looks. So uh, we're working on the food court area here, adding some uh, some more fencing and then adding some garden sections over here uh, and making the park just a little bit prettier, uh, adding some poppies. Uh, I never really use the poppies, but I should use them more um, because I think they are just a, a pretty section of this game that, or a pretty part of this game that makes gardens look a little bit prettier than, uh, than just the flower boxes themselves. Um, uh, with that here, I think I'm actually trying to find my staff and move them around because I couldn't figure out where they were. Uh, and then along here, I'm creating some more uh, some more details with the bushes, um, stacking bushes to kind of create a, a layered effect with flowers in the middle of the bushes. Um, and then noticing since I decorated that area so heavily, we're actually moving back and decorating the main garden section a little bit better. It was a little barren. Uh, and then now that I decorated this area over here, I'm adding some more trees because it was also looking very barren over here as well. <laughs> um, and then I, here I'm thinking, oh, I'm actually done with the park. I'm going to save it. And then I get a bright idea. I'm not done with the park. <laughs> what do I want to create right here? I want to create a roller coaster. <laughs> I want to create another roller coaster. Um, uh, you'll hear, I think I'd mention it in the next live section uh, where I I know that I had mentioned that only the um, the the gentler the more gentle roller coasters in this scenario fit the theming of the park, but I figured, oh screw that! I I want an actual roller coaster, <laughs> so I I did research the vertical drop coaster, and I felt that actually worked out pretty well because not only is it they are small cars for the roller coaster, uh, so it or they are small cars for the roller coaster, so it kind of just emulates that you're flying in a plane more than an actual train, uh, roller coaster car, or I guess they're just trains for roller coasters. Uh, so I figured that actually will work out a little bit better here. Um, and before we start building, I, as you can tell, I'm making more, uh, de doing some more detailing decisions. And I'm slowly running out of money again. Uh, but we kind of get lucky here. I'm working on the roller coaster a little bit. And then I finally reach the uh, the second goal of the, of the scenario, which was sell 400 tickets in the park. And I believe I, that gives you 5,000 5, extra dollars. That you can spend and so i end up just paying back one of the loans and taking the large loan so we can finish this coaster uh, which you just saw it right there I, I just completed the second part of the scenario so we get a gold status on this scenario for completing it all the way through and now i'm just working on this roller coaster i was having some trouble trying to figure out how to make it dive back underneath itself uh work itself way through so i can get back to that center section of the of the track uh, of the entrance um, I figured I wanted it to dive back down like that, kind of doing a a sideways wall. I, I'm not sure really what it's called, but where you you go up and then uh, kind of turn sideways like you're you're doing a wall ride. And maybe it's just called a wall ride back down. Um, so I did that over the food court, and then it's coming back down and turning the opposite direction uh, into a, a small downward helix underneath the the train entrance itself, or I guess the uh, the station itself. And then this is where I'm trying to figure out, well, how do I loop it back over? And what I did was I just made a half loop into a half corkscrew, into another half corkscrew, uh, into an inversion. Uh, I guess it would just be a, a barrel roll at the end of the, the half corkscrew to make it so that you're perpendicular to the land again and you're right side up. And then you just do a, a small little downward slope into the, the station again. And that worked out pretty well. The, the ride intensity is high but it's not too high the excitement's very high so a lot of people really enjoyed the ride i felt it looked good um and then with that theming in mind i created i was like well i guess we'll just add another hanger over here in retrospect i probably should have done something different in theming maybe just have it to where it's like a launch pad on an aircraft carrier or something along those lines but i mean this was an after uh, an afterthought of what I wanted to do in regards to how I actually wanted to, to build this coaster. I wasn't even going to build this coaster originally. So <laughs> the, this was an afterthought. And I was like, oh, quick, let's, I think I was making this at like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, oh, I'll build a roller coaster really quick. I need to go to bed, but I want to build this roller coaster. <laughs> and so as you can tell, I'm just doing that now, kind of 
quickly throwing together some theming parts, trying to figure out how I want it to look. Um, but I was really, really pleased with the way that this coaster turned out. Uh, I could, like I said, I could have themed it a little bit better, but that's neither here nor there. I think that's one of the downfalls that I, I do struggle with in this game is that I want to decorate everything at the same time all at once. So I get a little distracted. Um, I don't know if that is ADD, but it is what it is. Uh, but with that, we're getting near the end of this section uh, into the actual final part of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you here and we'll see you in the live section. So, as you can tell, we uh, did not end the episode there. <laughs> I, uh, I decided that I wanted to have one more roller coaster in this scenario. Um, and that included uh, building a vertical drop coaster. Well, I did mention earlier that I felt that a big steel coaster wasn't really along the same lines as the theme of this park, uh, which we have these you know, little small coasters over here. I think the vertical drop does kind of work a at least better than just a normal steel roller coaster. Uh, maybe I could have themed it a little bit better, but I do like the idea that there's, you know, another, um, another hangar building over here, uh, just along the same lines as, as the rest of the buildings here. And so we have this little vertical drop here uh, called Top Gun, and it just goes down to beyond 90 degree angle uh, into a, a little half loop, into a corkscrew, into another corkscrew, uh, into an inversion to make it right side up and just right back to the uh, right back to the entrance. So it's nothing too crazy fancy. Um, it's just very small, uh, but it does work very well. It does have a pretty high uh, intense or high excitement rating, 65 with a 75 intense rating. So it works very well for, for those who want that intense ride in this park. Um, but with that, uh, I am pretty pleased with this park. I feel like it turned out pretty well uh, for what we were going for. Um, yeah, just small little small little rides, nothing too substantial. Uh, a couple of, of small rides, a couple of gentle rides, like one, one gentle ride, one Thor ride, and, and three coasters, and that yeah, feels like it worked out pretty well. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Parkitect. Uh, it did take me a little bit to, to make it, but um, hopefully we can churn some out here a little bit sooner. Uh, I am pretty preoccupied with Civilization VI right now, but you know there there still is, there still is some time to work on some Parkitect videos, uh, especially for you, Vince. I know that is what you're clamoring for. <laughs> So once again, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, feel free to leave any suggestions uh, below in the comments, any ideas, just any any thoughts that you guys have in regards to this video. I'd love to hear them. I love your feedback and suggestions. Um, and uh, yeah, once again, thank you. Make sure to, to like this uh, video as well as uh, subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell if you guys are uh, enjoying the content that you see. All right, see you guys later.